Hello, and welcome to the best football show. I am Brian Baldinger at Baldy NFL on Instagram, X, Threads, YouTube, you name it. Uh, you can find this podcast, this daily podcast, on wherever you get your free Odyssey podcast. Download it, like, subscribe. Um, I'm here nearly every day, especially uh, in the countdown now coming up to the draft, really breaking down a lot of the draft picks. That's going to be coming up starting next week where I'm going to go literally position by position, how I see the top five players at every position. This year, I'm going to include nickel corner. Uh, In my top five, I'm going to include slot receiver because, let's face it, they are starting positions in the NFL, the way teams' formations are right now and how valuable those positions are. So I'll include those. We'll start that next week. But right now, we started yesterday just breaking down the division of the NFC North. We talked about both the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers, how highly competitive they were throughout the year. Uh, Green Bay won the last three games last year, went to Dallas and just smoked them, put up 48 points on the Cowboys, ran them right out of their gym, uh, you know, and then lost in a nail biter to San Francisco the following week. So really the NFC North, I think was a lot better last year than what people thought. I, I never expected the Green Bay Packers to be nine and eight to win playoff games on the road to do what they did, but that's a credit to Jordan Love. It's a credit to Matt LaFleur. It's a it's a credit to Gutekinds and his staff and the personnel department and how quickly they rebuilt that football team. It And so now let's get to the second half. Let's get to the Vikings and the Chicago Bears. The Vikings last year, obviously, they lost Kirk Cousins halfway through the season. Uh, they were 4-4 four and four when they lost Kirk Cousins, and uh, they, they got a little juice with Joshua Dobbs when they made the trade. They went through Nick Mullins, uh, Jaron Hall. Uh, they weren't very good, and they collapsed. And defensively, they started off very strong, uh, and they collapsed down the stretch. They finished uh, – Brian Flores did a fantastic job. But, you know, when you're not scoring points and you're struggling on offense uh, and you lose Justin Jefferson for a half a season with a hamstring pull, like you're just not going to be as good. Um, and when you're not scoring points, your, your defense struggles. And they did down the stretch, and they – they kind of collapsed. They were seven and six. They were in a playoff hunt and they lost four in a row to finish seven and 10. So Kirk Cousins, free agency, goes to the Atlanta Falcons. Big hole there. Uh, Minnesota went out there and signed Sam Darnold. All right. Sam Darnold, um, you, you think about it, Josh McCown is the quarterback coach for Kevin O'Connell right now. Uh, Sam Darnold's rookie year, Josh McCown was signed to the Jets to kind of be Sam Darnold's mentor. Well, he's still going to be the mentor. They literally, I mean, as far as I remember, Josh McCown and Sam Darnold drove to the Florham Park facility of the New York Jets every day together. And Josh was at the end of his career. I don't know what year it was, 16, 17. He played a long time. Uh, Very, very smart quarterback. A long career, now coaching. So there's a relationship with Sam Darnold and with Josh McCown. That might have helped sign Sam Darnold. Who knows? Sam Darnold had a chance to play for the first really sound organization. You can't say that about the Jets when he was there. You can't say that about the Carolina Panthers when he was there. But he kind of saw what it looks like when you have stability inside the building. There's a plan. It's a talented roster. You got a chance to start week 18 when they when they sat Brock Purdy getting ready for the playoffs. So he played, played a game last year. Uh, but he got a chance to be the scout team quarterback. And, he, and he, it's hard to say. Is Sam Darnold a rehabilitated quarterback the way we saw Baker Mayfield last year? Uh, is he going to be – can he stay healthy? We saw him at the last six games – his last six games of the Carolina Panthers in 2022, he went four and two in the starter and played very well. He might very well be the starter this year. He might very well be the long-term answer. But the Vikings are making changes. If you think about their big three that they could throw to with Justin Jefferson, TJ Hawkinson, Jordan Addison, I mean, they, they caught 20 touchdown passes amongst those three last year. It's a talented trio. You bring Aaron Jones from Green Bay. It's an upgrade over Alexander Madison at running back. It's an upgrade over the last year of Dalvin Cook's career. 
in Minnesota. Uh, so you look at them, and then you look at some of the pieces that they added on defense. You know, they re-signed Harrison Smith to keep the safety situation of him and Cam Bynum strong. They went out and got Jerry Tillery. They got Jonathan uh, Greener. They got uh, Alex Van Ginkle, you know, that Brian Flores coached in Minnesota. So while they lost to Neil Hunter, you know, I mean, Greenard is younger, coming off a great season. Van Ginkle is a proven uh, player, whether he's a starter, uh, whether you play him an outside linebacker or defensive end, uh, he's part of the rotation now. Uh, so the Minnesota Vikings have the 11th and the 23rd pick, okay? So almost every single mock draft, for whatever they're worth, have the Minnesota Vikings trading up to draft a quarterback. And you kind of get the feeling like that's going to happen. I don't know how high they can get. Uh, Josh McCown coached Drake May in Charlotte in high school. He was his coach. There's a relationship with Drake May. Could the Minnesota Vikings trade up as high as maybe number two or three? With Washington, I doubt. But maybe with New England, maybe with Arizona, uh, maybe with the Chargers, in a position to draft Drake May or somebody else. I don't know. But they they have – when you have the, the 11th and 23rd pick, you've got some ammunition. Now, they don't have any number twos or number threes. My guess is to go from 11 – to try to get to number three with New England, you're going to have to give up more than the 11th and 23rd pick. Probably have to give up at least one of your two fourth round picks this year and possibly a pick next year. I haven't done the chart, but other, other people smarter than me probably. Know. So it's just, uh, you know, look, it's it, Minnesota has an awful lot in place. They've got skilled talent on offense. They've got a pretty good offensive line. They've got a defense that, Probably could use some more juice. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It looks like they could use some more juice, uh, whether it's on the defensive line. Uh, they signed, uh, you know, they, they signed the guys I talked about on the defensive front. But you could always upgrade. You know, you can always add pass rushers. I think the corners are pretty good. So that's what they have right now. It's really, are they going to make the move for a quarterback? I kind of feel like these teams that are looking for quarterbacks, whether it's Minnesota, whether it's uh, the Raiders, the Denver Broncos, I feel like any of these teams that are in the need of quarterback, you might see a trade made and pulled off before we get to the NFL draft. So they're in a position, um, and maybe you almost have to, if you really want to get – the guy, your guy, maybe you have to trade even twice the way we've seen, say, the Philadelphia Eagles traded twice to go draft Carson uh, Wentz with the number two pick. They, they actually moved up twice in order to get to number two, and they did it before the draft. So these are moves that I think can be made that we might be talking about pretty soon. Teams that might want to get out, like the New England Patriots. Maybe they don't want to take quarterback at three. Maybe they want to keep building a roster. They have a lot of holes there. Maybe Minnesota is one of those teams that they would consider trading with. Okay. That's the Minnesota Vikings. We feel like a quarterback is what Kevin O'Connell uh, is looking for to groom and finding out if Sam Darnold can hold it down the fort, which gets us to the Chicago Bears, who were 7-10 and 10 last year, and just one change after another. I mean, Shane Waldron comes in for Luke Getze as the offensive coordinator position. Uh, Matt Eberflus took over as the defensive coordinator. And the day he took over, in addition to the trade for Montez Sweat, the defense completely took off, and they played great. They re-signed Jalen Johnson, coming off a great season, to go with Tyreek Stevenson and Kyler Gordon. You feel like the secondary is in place. They go get, you know, Kevin Byer to play opposite of Jaquan Brisker when they let Eddie Jackson go in free agency. Um, the offense – gets the addition of Keenan Allen, a huge addition, to go with DeAndre Swift and Cole Komet and DJ Moore and Khalil Herbert. Uh, and, you know, you look at 
uh, Roshan Johnson. Like, they've got depth at running back. The offense line, it got pretty good. They, they signed Ryan Bates, kid that played center at Penn State, played up in Buffalo, started up there. Maybe he's the new center. The Bears have the number one pick. I mean, it, it don't, it's almost a foregone conclusion that Caleb Williams is coming in. I'm a Caleb Williams fan. They've got to vet all the other quarterbacks. Uh, but I feel like Caleb is going to come in, and not just come in, but as opposed to, let's say, Bryce Young last year, or even when uh, Joe Burrow came into Cincinnati or uh, Trevor Lawrence came into Jacksonville. Like if you look at all the recent number one draft picks at quarterback, I don't think any of those players, Trevor, Joe, Bryce, came into a situation like Chicago, a defense that improved dramatically during the course of the season. Offense with a decent offense line with a chance to get better, big draft for offense alignment, a chance to get better, and skilled position stars. I mean, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, what I mentioned, Cole Komet, like they've got real talent. And Shane Waldron's a proven offense coordinator, both with the Rams and with Seattle. It set up for Caleb Williams to have success. Now they have the number one pick for Caleb. They have the number nine pick. Like I really feel like they've got to maximize that pick. It may be a great player. Who knows? Maybe Roma Dunze is there at number nine. Maybe Dallas Turner, the edge rusher from Alabama, is there at nine. Like maybe you can't pass either one of those guys up. But you could trade back with somebody that wants to get up to maybe get a sliding quarterback, a sliding receiver. Who knows? The draft has a mind of its own once it gets started. We always get surprised. Mock drafts get blown up in the first 20 minutes sometimes on a Thursday night. So how do the Bears maximize that number nine pick? There's going to be a good player there. But I think the Bears could get a haul with that ninth pick. Maybe they just take the best player available. I think they're in a position to do that. But there's also going to be in a position where take the phone call. Take the phone call. Listen to the call. Listen to what somebody's willing to offer and see just what you might be able to do to maximize that. Might be another first round pick, a high second round pick to get there, depending on where somebody might come from. So uh, the Bears, I think, are in a good position to continue the upward swing. You know, and look, we have I haven't mentioned Justin Fields at all. I feel like Justin Fields improved with Luke Etsy last year. I think you saw, you know, a player. Now he's had he's had some little injuries where he's missed some time. But I felt like he was on a good arc. We'll see what happens in Pittsburgh. But you can't help but feel, and this is pretty obvious to everybody, you get Caleb Williams on a rookie contract. You have a chance for five years to build your team with Caleb on a rookie contract. If you kept Justin, he was still on a rookie contract. He had another year, you know, in a very low amount of money, like 3 or $4 million dollars that they would have owed him for this year, and then it would balloon to like $25 million. Well, they don't have that balloon payment with Caleb Williams. They have a chance to continue to really, you know, with this, they can, then they re-signed Jalen Johnson. They spent a boatload of money on the two linebackers last year, and it looked like it really paid off. T.J. Edwards was awesome last year. So I feel like this, they made the trade for Montez Sweat. Their second-round pick, is Montez Sweat. I'm just here to tell you. I don't care what you think about Montez Sweat. There is no Montez Sweat in this draft. There's nobody 6'6", 270 pounds, that runs in the 4'4s in this draft. Nobody. Now, it's not to say that you're not going to get some great pass rusher out of this draft. There's there's some really good players. I, I mentioned Dallas Turner. But there's nobody physically like Montez Sweat. And he plays the game the right way. Plays it really hard. Their defense got better with him. His length makes a difference in a lot of different things. So they used their second round pick this year on Montez Sweat. They've already won the second round. Their key to Chicago right now is to me, maximizing that number nine pick. It won't surprise me to see them trade back and, and gain extra picks and really build this team depth wise and add more talent to it. So that's the way I look at both the Minnesota Vikings, Chicago bears. 
That's been the NFC North. This has been the best football show. Uh, I really think that you've joined me here. Look forward to talking to you every day. I'm making my way around the league. I'm doing work for some of the teams in the league. Uh, I'll be breaking down all kinds of prospects. I just broke down Brock Bowers on Saturday night. What a prospect he is. And by the way, Brock Bowers is far more than just a great receiver. That guy is a pit bull of a blocker. I mean, he's truly a Georgia Bulldog as a blocker. He's a true why. Anyways, that's been the best football show. Thanks for joining me. Look forward to talking to you um, in the coming days here this week. It's been a lot of fun. Talk to you soon.